welcome back to our Harkla YouTube channel. We're so happy to have you again here today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica. We are the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla, and today we're answering your questions all about primitive reflexes. That's right. You asked, we answer. This is what we are loving to do lately. I guess this is our new style. We're enjoying it. We have a lot of questions about primitive reflexes, which is great because we are obsessed with primitive reflexes and talking about them where hopefully people will listen. All right, first question. Most common causes why reflexes don't integrate. It's like the all time number one question that we wish we could give you a great answer for. It's also kind of like the most controversial as well because the research is all over the place. And so really what we've seen clinically is in utero with drugs, alcohol, trauma, stress, birth, C-sections, forceps, vacuum, traumatic births, First year of life, struggling with tummy time, not enough tummy time, not enough floor time, maybe in containers too much throughout the day, and you know, any other diagnoses as well. The key here is if you do have children or if you work with children, to just have those primitive reflexes be on your radar so you know what to look for, and then you can take the next steps to helping if you do see them. And we also really like to approach this topic with kindness. We're not trying to blame anyone for what you've done or what you've not done. There's really no one's fault here when we're talking about primitive reflexes being retained. It's just, this is what we're working with. This is what happened. And we are going to help them from here on out. And we're going to support their nervous system. Exactly. All right. Next question is, how do I know if my four-year-old's reflexes are integrated? It's a great question. Mm, it's a money question. <laughs> Really what we're looking for is function. Are they struggling to get through their day? Are they struggling to play? Are they having a hard time navigating their environment? Are they stressed out? Are they in fight or flight? Are they having significant emotional breakdowns? Are they just, are they struggling in, in any area really? Yeah, four-year-olds are meant to be like moving a lot, right? So we wanna see a four-year-old running, jumping, climbing, playing on the playground, exploring their environment with their body. So if your four-year-old's not doing those things, if they're hesitant or avoidant, if they are very clumsy and they're not able to master a new motor skill over several trials, then we wanna take a look and say, okay, why is this happening? Can we look at their sensory system? But also let's dive into their primitive reflexes and see if we've had, if we have some retained primitive reflexes that are causing this child's body to not move in a smooth coordinated way and have that good motor planning. So it is like Rachel said, more about looking at that functional mm -hmm. aspect of the four year old and how they're getting through their day. But also four years old, that's like such a tough area, such a tough age because we're generally not formally testing primitive reflexes in four-year-olds. Usually it starts around five years old because they can complete the activities, they can go through the motor movements with more ease. So really we're looking at function and we're seeing how they're how they're functioning and we're not necessarily going to be going through those tests. Yeah. Now if you do have a young child or even an older child, we have another video where we give you some activities to do that are, it's like a screening to see if your child might have retained primitive reflexes. So you can watch that video and go through those activities with your child to see, oh, they really struggled with this activity, so they might have a retained moral reflex, and then you know what steps to take next. Um, we'll link that video in the description. Yep. Okay, next question is, curling toes when learning to walk, is this reflex related? Hmm. Great question. Yeah. Like curling the toes under while they're learning to walk? My thought is like curling your, like curling your toes. Yeah, you curling know? them under. Yeah. Generally, it's a pretty typical common thing for kids and babies to do weird things when they're learning new milestones. <laughs> to do weird things. <laughs> like curling their toes. Or going up on their toes mm -hmm. or walking on like the outsides or the insides of their feet, walking on their heels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do all sorts of funky things when they're learning to walk. That's yeah. true. But it could be, could in, you know, bold, 
related to that Babinski reflex or the, you know, I, I don't want to say it is because generally the Babinski reflex hasn't integrated until like three years old. So it's again, pretty typical to work through those, those reflexes at that age. But if it's something that you're seeing that's maybe impacting their ability to learn to walk or to walk successfully, that's when we'd want to kind of look more into it and really identify, is this a reflex? Is this a tactile sensitivity? Sometimes it's a tactile thing. Or is it like a structural thing? Like maybe their feet are not struct structurally sound. There's something's going on with their muscles or their bones or something, which you would want to get that looked at by a professional. I would make sure that you have them out of shoes, like, 90% of the time, let them be barefoot, let them walk on different textured surfaces, let them go outside and walk barefoot, walk barefoot inside, you know, maybe do some tactile modulation activities, put their feet in a bucket of corn or beans or rice or Orbeez, just making sure that they're not touching it with their hands and they're not gonna eat them and ingest them, but we want that novel tactile input on their feet and that could be helpful. Yep. All right, next question is, my 20 month old doesn't like to be raised up high and it wasn't always like this. Is this a retained reflex? Oh, this is a great question. I actually went through this with my daughter who was really fearful when we would lift her up and throw her in the air and it was really fun for us as adults, but for the kiddos, they're like so gravitationally insecure. So what we did is we took it back to the basics and we got on the therapy ball. We did sitting and weight shifting side to side. We went upside down over the therapy ball. We went on our tummy on the therapy ball and we did slow blanket swinging activities. And the blanket swing was actually another activity that she was really fearful of for a while. And we just continued to practice. We did log rolling. We did some passive rocking. Um, and it seemed to help because now she enjoys it. Now she, she doesn't want to be blanket swung. She wants to be blanket thrown like a magic carpet. <laughs> She's like, no, up and down, up and down. And she just wants us to throw her as high as she can. I love that. So yeah, that's my thought. Yeah, I think this is a pretty typical thing that kids will go through. You know, they enjoy an activity for a while and then maybe something happens and they become fearful of it. The thing that you don't want to do is completely avoid these activities. Yeah. When you completely avoid these activities, your child never gets the chance to learn how to process and modulate that input that they're receiving. So I don't think this activity or this fear is necessarily related to a primitive reflex, potentially could be related to the Moro reflex, but I think it's more just the child's maybe learning more about their body, they're gaining more independence, and we just wanna make sure that we're not avoiding those activities the moment that our child says they don't like them. We wanna yes. incorporate them into fun, play-based activities, and simultaneously, we don't wanna force our child to do something they really, truly don't like, so it is a balance of finding that just right challenge, but going back to the main question, I wouldn't say this is necessarily re related to a retained primitive reflex. Yeah. Last question, here we go and the best of them all, honestly. I love this question. What are the impacts if a child didn't crawl because they didn't like being on their tummy, so they bum shuffled? Dun, dun, dun. Well, the first impact is that they will likely have a retained STNR, which is the symmetrical tonic neck reflex, which that reflex integrates through crawling. Mm -hmm. So if your child didn't crawl, if they had what we call a janky crawl, Basically, if they didn't establish and master crawling on their hands and knees, then it's likely going to affect the STNR specifically. In addition, one of the beautiful things about crawling is that it strengthens our palmar arches, it strengthens our upper body, it strengthens our torso, it works on our ocular motor skills. All of these things are required for things like holding a pencil, writing, copying from the board, sitting at the table, opening containers, twisting off bottle caps or opening lids. All of these underlying skills build on those developmental milestones. And so when a kid doesn't crawl on their hands and their knees, in the clinic setting, we often do see them struggle with 
things like holding their pencil, writing, drawing, coloring, copying from the board, yeah. and potentially ocular motor challenges, you know, yeah. being able to visually track, catch a ball, hand-eye coordination. So I know it seems simple to just bum scoot, like that's just how they get from point A to point B. It doesn't really matter. It does. But it does <laughs> matter. I'm also going to add on to that, that crawling really helps to establish hip strength and mm -hmm. mobility. So that, that musculature through the lower body, the hips, the knees, the ankles, the feet, all very, very important for mobility, walking, running, jumping, riding a bicycle, climbing, sports later on, and just overall coordination. So it affects those fine motor visual perception activities as well as those bigger gross motor activities. Hopefully we haven't scared you away though. I'm not trying to scare you. <laughs> because it's never too late to crawl. You can always get down on the floor with your child, crawl through tunnels, crawl up and down the stairs, crawl across the room from point A to point B. If you can incorporate crawling into your daily routine, it will help tremendously. It'll help organize the brain. It provides proprioceptive input, tactile input, visual input. It is such an all around great activity. It's just everything. It affects everything. Can you tell we're very <laughs> passionate about this topic? <laughs> we do have some more resources for you on crawling, on primitive reflexes. We have other YouTube videos. We have books and courses. There's a book, Crawling, Crawling for Brain Development. Yeah, I think that's Craw what it's called. Crawling for Brain Development. So we will link all of that in the description so that you can go check out these resources and get more tips and tools to help your child. If you are concerned about your child's primitive reflexes at all, we highly recommend getting an occupational therapy evaluation by a professional who is well-versed in primitive reflexes. When in doubt, rule it out. Yep. If you liked this video, if you thought it was helpful, if you enjoyed it, make sure you click the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We release a new video every Tuesday. And if you want us to answer your questions on an upcoming video, fill out the form that's in the description. Come hang out with us on Instagram as well. You can find us at Harkla underscore family, as well as at All Things Sensory Podcast. We do have a podcast as well with over 300 episodes by now. It's crazy. So listen to all the content, soak up as much as you can, and hopefully it helps you. Yep, and with that, we will see you next week. Hold on, let me skip my hair back. Can we get that on camera? Her holding her hair and flipping the back of it. People don't under people don't understand what goes into this. <laughs>